Hey, I'm James from Soaking Up Barbecue, and today we are doing a wood fired, then braised lamb shoulder for some tacos, all inside of our Kamado Joe. Let me tell you how. Ever since I got back from vacation, my inbox has been full of messages with things like, James, have you seen the newest Aaron Franklin book where he talks about running a wood only fire inside of his big green egg? Now, I haven't seen that book to know exactly what method he's on about, but I've done many wood fires and that's got me inspired to do an updated wood only cook inside of a Kamado grill. A couple years ago, I did a wood only brisket fuel using my heat deflectors and a half stone setup to be able to get a bit of an indirect zone as well as a warming area for our splits. And this, you see what I'm holding in my hand is the first secret is using appropriately sized wood splits. So this is maybe, you know, a finger to two fingers width by about a finger's length and size. So these are very, very small wood splits, much smaller than something like I'd use uh, in my offset smoker behind me. Speaking of an offset smoker, is this going to give you the full offset experience inside of your Komodo grill? No, not quite but it's darn good and it's definitely worth trying. I've done briskets this way. I've done tri-tips cooked only with real wood coals, as well as using wood splits and things like my Masterbuilt Gravity Series along with the Connected Joe, and they always turn out a winner. Not quite on the same degree as an offset level, but I recognize not everyone has the privilege of having so many tools. And you might see in the background, I actually have an extra tool. I've been lucky enough to get my hands on a prototype of Smoke Norse brand new coming out reverse flow smoker. I'll be doing a couple tests and sharing my honest thoughts on that compared to the offset that I own behind that, which is my Huron Gen 2. But enough about the offset. Let's talk about a wood fired cook inside of your Kamado grill. So running a wood only fire inside of any Kamado is actually a lot simpler than you might think it is if we follow a couple simple rules. As I mentioned before, I've done things like brisket to tri-tips. I've even done direct rotisserie beef ribs on my Big Joe Series 3. And that turned out so well, I actually wanted to try using the rotisserie for today's cook. But there's two things uh, that I didn't think of coming back. Maybe it's still a vacation brain. But the first one is the four inches less clearance that you get in a Series 1, Series 2 versus my Series 3. And this prohibits having the space to slide in a deflector stone underneath the rotisserie without impeding its motion with inside the grill and this quickly became a problem about 20 minutes in the fat started to render from our lamb shoulder and then I was into a full blown inferno and quickly had to run and get that out of there before we burnt it to a crisp so I'm back to my tried and true proven method for running a wood fired cook inside of any Kamado and again this does work on everything from the connected Joe to my series one to the series three that I've done before if you have a, a series three and you want to use the rotisserie you can get away with that by placing a deflector stone underneath, but I didn't fire up my Big Joe Series 3 for today's cook. So the principles to follow first are wood size. So we wanna make sure that we have appropriate size wood splits as well as preheating them. If I were just to take these, these are not kiln dried wood splits, more on that in a second, and just toss them into the fire, they're gonna put off a ton of smoke. So we wanna make sure that we have good size wood splits as well as that we preheat them inside of our Kamado Joe so that they are more likely to combust within the first 20 to 30 seconds and not put off a bunch of bad smoke. Mentioning uh, kiln dried wood, kiln dried wood will burn very, very quickly as it's already been dehydrated, but there's almost no moisture content. I didn't bring it out here today, but I have a moisture content reader and the kiln dried wood is not going to impart the same amount of flavor. And I've done a couple tests uh, privately with my offset using kiln dried wood versus naturally seasoned wood. And the flavor difference, I almost even can't even call it flavor with the kiln dried wood as it's just paper. It burns really hot, really quick. It's a great way to get a coal bed but this is not imparting the same flavor. And this question comes up all the time, so I just wanted to take a minute on that. Make sure if you are getting wood chunks that you're gonna bury in your coals and use them, try to avoid the big box store kiln dried wood splits, as these do not have near the same amount of flavor. I would take one split like this that is naturally seasoned and get more flavor from littering 
my firebox with kiln dried wood splits is that just isn't going to impart the same flavor. There's a good article on amazingribs.com as well on the science or the myth of soaking your wood chips and how that actually doesn't do anything to solve the problem. So I'll link to that down below uh, in the description if you want to check that out. So we've covered uh, size of wood spits, placement in terms of uh, banking our coals uh, to the back as well as not using uh, kiln dried wood and using naturally seasoned wood. The last uh, tip that I'll share with you here is timing. So you want to make sure that you find the right point to add wood on the down curve. If we wait till our coal bed is nearly extinguished and then we try and add some wood, this is not going to combust nice and clean as there's not enough of a coal bed to get these fresh pieces of wood to combust. So, so depending on the size of the wood that you're using, I would set a timer and just get used to the routine. But you're going to be about every 15 to 20 minutes, max 30 for something uh, this size, and you're going to be interacting with your fire, which is about half the amount of time that you would get on an offset. So you're definitely signing up for the full offset experience if not more frequent interactions with your fire but if you're using something like the meter you'll start to see as your temperatures are declining off this is a good sign that you're ready to go and add that fuel don't add it right away as uh, we'll do a laddering up on temperature but at the same time you don't want to come back all the way down uh, to more than 20 degrees below your target temperature so if we were targeting 270, if I see 250 degrees, that is a great time to add wood splits. So now that you have all the basics on how to run a wood fire inside of your Kamado Joe, let's go into today's recipe, which is a lamb shoulder that we're gonna be doing first wood smoked, then braised for some amazing tacos. Let me take you back a little bit earlier. We're getting everything set up, including my fail on forgetting the Joe Tissery and the clearance uh, on my series one, as well as a great dry rub for tacos. See you a little bit later on today for the taste test. Okay, we'll get our our lamb shoulder out in a second but first I want to get to work on our dry rub. I'm always going to add a little bit of garlic and that's exactly what I have left so I'm just going to use the container that I have from my garlic powder and start to add some layers of flavor from there. Let's start with uh, some fresh cracked black pepper first. And I should say, I say black pepper, but this is actually the uh, Costco five spice blend. So it's got black, white, red, green, and I always forget uh, what the other one is, but there's uh, I believe five in there. So I'll take it fast forward while I crack uh, a cap full of fresh pepper. Let's see where we're at. Oh, perfect. Full cap of fresh cracked black pepper. Add that in. Next, we'll add in a cap full of salt. I'm using diamond crystal kosher salt. The wind doesn't blow it away on me here. And I'm just using the cap for measurement. I believe it's about two tablespoons worth if you uh, don't have a similar cap. So there's our 50-50 salt and pepper with a little bit of granulated garlic. So next I'm gonna go for about a half cap full of chili powder. It'd be about one tablespoon. About a quarter cap of cayenne pepper. Add that in. It'll give us some really nice color. Go for about a half cap of ground cumin, quarter cap of curry powder, just a dash of cilantro, similar of crushed red pepper flakes, and optional, especially since we already have some garlic, but I have some coarse grain garlic, which uh, goes really nice, just the extra texture since we're gonna score our fat cap. So to get a little bit more of a diversity in texture, a little bit of coarse ground garlic, if you have it. If you don't have it, you'll be just fine with the ground stuff. See all our layers there? Perfect. Let's see how we did. Give it a bit of the uh, finger test here. That's gonna be amazing on lamb. That is really well balanced. Great savory flavor with a little bit of spice, especially the last little bit on the tongue. That is going to be awesome. So let's glove up, get out our lamb. We'll score our fat cap, or at least I'll try actually Maybe I won't score the fat cap. I don't want to cut through the uh, the netting, but we'll dry this off, get our rub on, and get ready to get it on the Joe Tisserie. Take it fast forward. I like to stop about halfway through and give it another shake, just since some of the heavier ingredients, like the pepper and that coarse grit garlic, will sink to the bottom. So this just helps make sure that we're getting the same flavor profile all the way around whatever it is that we're smoking, like today's lamb shoulder. Add a meter probe. I'm going to try and avoid uh, touching the side metal prongs, which will give us a bit of an inaccurate reading, but looks like I found a nice opening right in the middle. Perfect. Let's go get this on the pit. Okay, for today's cook, as you can see, I've already banked what leftover charcoal I had. I pushed all to the back. This is going to give us a coal bed. We could get away with a little bit less, but 
it's just not worth removing since we need a great coal bed to help our wood splits combust. If we were to try and build a coal bed with just wood, we're gonna get a lot of acrid, dirty smoke for a long time and or have our vents all the way open and get to a temperature that's way too high. So the game plan is to lay a couple of these wood splits right at the front of the basket where there is no charcoal and those will start to dry out. Just like I used the warming shelves on my offset, this is gonna help the wood start to come warm it's gonna help the wood start to get warm, dry out, so that when we place it on, it will combust right away. So I've placed two to three pieces in the front. Let's grab our grow blazer grow gun. We're not gonna install the jotisserie just yet. We'll do that uh, once we're up to temperature, but for the time being, let's get a fire going. Let's let our grow come up to temperature, bottom vents open all the way, and the top vent will also open all the way. Well, we got no further into our second log and that's about the point that we started to render our fat cap on the lamb. And I got an alert on the meter that we were in a full blown inferno as the fat started to fall down. So I forgot in my series one and two, Big Joe, that I don't have the height difference of the series three where I can get away sliding a deflector in underneath the jotisserie. So I'm gonna have to go for my normal cooking with firewood uh, setup like I've shown before, where I've done a wood-fired brisket or tri-tip. So let's start by installing our divide and conquer rack. Next, I'm going to install the soapstone like I've done before. This offers the largest area of protection uh, and will help stop any flames coming up from behind uh, and or in front and still make it easy to access our fire for adding wood splits. Drop in our soapstone. Next, we'll add in a cooking grid that we can set our lamb on. Uh, this will still help make sure that we get the smoke coming up from our wood fire, because again, it's gonna be forced out front and do a little bit of a loop over the back. So I'll get some food safe gloves and we'll place our lamb right here. And so this, this time I am sure this does work. I've done it many times before. So back to continuing to cook with our dome closed, vents all the way open. All right, we are at the four hour mark. Our bark is set. So I wanna now get the netting off and we're gonna to transfer to a braise. While I'm here, I'll just throw these next few uh, wood splits that have been heating in so that they have time to catch while we are working on moving into a Dutch oven. And from this point on, I'm gonna switch back to charcoal since we're gonna be braising. It won't be a benefit, but I just had those uh, wood splits ready to go, which is why I've added them. So let's transfer off our lamb shoulder, meet you over in the kitchen. Okay, so first we wanna get the netting off of our lamb and because of my failed rotisserie action at the beginning, that is a little charred, but we saved it in time before that was a complete disaster. So I'll just pull this off, make sure I get any loose bits. Definitely don't want that showing up in our shred. All right, I think I've got it. This already smells really good, even though it's not quite done. Move this into our Dutch oven. For our braise, there's a bunch of cool things that you can do, but some of the best flavor I get already comes in a can. This is super easy. You want the easy route, this is a great way to go. So I'm gonna add two cans of Rotel with the extra spice. So this is really just hatch chilies, I believe, and diced tomatoes. Take it fast forward, I'll get this going. Then a, a cooking beer, one that you don't mind saying goodbye to of your choice. This is just for the flavor as well as braising liquid. So we've got a couple other things that we're gonna add over here to dice up, but I actually wanna get this back on the heat right away. So let me meet you over by the grill. Okay, so first order of business is moving our hot gear out of the way. I'm just gonna move this to a spare Komodo I'm fortunate to have. Break over our coals. Again, I'll add some charcoal from this point out once the wood dies down. Our X accessory ring, I'm gonna start in the low position. We'll move it up once we come up to a simmer and drop in our Dutch oven. This is the Lodge five quart Dutch oven, as I mentioned, which sits in all Komodo Joe rings. On the Big Joe, it sits a lot lower like this, where it's up near the top and on the classic, uh, it still sits nice in the ring and it's supported. Our larger seven quart just sits around the outside of the ring. Uh, and so it can balance on there, but you can knock it off where this isn't going anywhere. So that's one of the reasons I like uh, this size. So again, we'll give this about uh, five, 10 minutes, check on it. I'm waiting to see uh, all those cold ingredients that we added start to simmer. 
Uh, I can also add charcoal right now without worrying of the bad flavor that that will impart onto our food because we've now transferred to our Dutch oven and it's going to be protected from that smoke. So no benefit from burning wood any longer, but also no detriment to adding some charcoal and getting that off-putting flavor that that can impart on your food if you run out mid-cook since we are protected. If you find yourself in that situation in another cook, just remove your food and wait for it to combust before uh, adding everything. Let's close this up and see you in a couple minutes. Let's go over to the kitchen counter. Okay, now that we've got our Dutch oven sorted as well as adding a little bit of extra charcoal, we can get to work on our final ingredients. So I've got one red onion, a couple jalapenos. Uh, you can add as many as you like. These are just a garnish for adding to our tacos as well as a lime. Again, have a few more of these in case uh, need be and some fresh cilantro. So let's get to work. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of the red onion and a little bit of the cilantro into our brace. So I'm gonna be setting that aside, but I'll take you fast forward while I get to work on prepping our raw ingredients. Okay, we've got our table dressing ready. Let's go add our leftovers into our Dutch oven. Add in our onions, extra cilantro and jalapeno. Cover this up and we'll check back in about an hour of simmering. Okay, I've just removed the top of our Dutch oven to get an internal temperature, but thought I'd bring you along. We're looking not only for temperature, but well, that probe feel. So we are right 209, 211, probing like butter, 211. I think that is exactly what we're after. A little tighter on this side, but that's not bad, especially if you get a bit of a mixture in our shred, a little bit of all sorts of feels. And I would say 90% of this is probing just like butter, so I want to get it off, let it rest. High heat gloves, they're doing their work today between the soap stone and this. All right, let's shred our lamb now that it's rested. That's not going to be much work as even I start to lift it, it's just coming apart. So I'll move it into a holding bowl to help keep some of this heat. And I've got some forks just to get a little bit of a finer shred. As the heat is still coming through these gloves, I think I'm going to use those well what a feast in front of me i wish there was a way youtube you got to figure out just to share a small sample of the smells uh, that are coming off of this amazing live fire smoked then braised lamb shoulder but enough about how it smells let's see how it tastes cheers <laughs> that is so good for some reason, not everyone loves lamb, even though I promise if you've had a bad experience, call it gamey or something, whatever you don't like, it is not gonna come through with this technique. This is absolutely fantastic. But if I can't convince you, this method will work equally well with something like a chuck roast of beef or pork shoulder or anything like that. If you wanna make your own uh, tacos at home, this is definitely gonna be on the repeat list. That's it for today though. I'm James Smoking at Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to, Fire it up. Yeah, like that's happening once.